Okie dokies. Part two. I just wanted to give a little, I guess, cooking method on how I cook potatoes like this. Um, you can see, I also don't use spatulas when I cook. Um, this takes some skill um, to do, but basically you get the food as loose as you can on the, the pan. Um, like I said, I use Montreal Montreal chicken seasoning. Um, you also use olive oil. And what the olive oil does, it it's it's lubricant. <laughs> All right, it's a uh, it reduces friction, especially on these Teflon coated nonstick pans. You get the food sliding around. Okay, I don't like using spatulas because it's kind of it's like primitive to me in a way. You're just moving the food around, moving this there, leaving the pan still. When you when you move the pan, anyways, um, when you move the pan around, you you basically soak up all the heat that's in the pan. If there's if it's hotter over here, the the rims of the pan get hot too. All right, so when you slide the food around, you're basically like capturing all that heat and helps the the food cook faster. <clears throat> so another thing that the oil does, oil stays hotter longer. If you've ever had pizza, you know at a, a pizza pizza place, pizza shop you can let the thing cool and you think it's cool until you bite into it and it's like molten lava on the top that's because oil has a high I guess thermal you know whatever I forget what it's called <coughs> thermal capacity or something <coughs> it holds in that heat so basically it if the oil gets on the potatoes, that's real hot. It's not just relying on the pan to cook it. The oil actually cooks it all over. <coughs> so, you can see that method. Basically, you get the food. You want to practice just moving the food around the pan. Now, this may look messed up on camera. My camera isn't the highest quality. But you get used to moving the food around without using a spatula. That's that's practice. And when you have to flip the food, you're basically jerking the pan backwards. All right. You're not tossing the food by yourself. You're letting the pan. You basically pull the pan backwards. Okay. Pull the pan. Practice with it. Do it. Do it a little bit. Don't try and flip because you you don't you're not t throwing up. You can toss food everywhere if you do that. So you slide it back and you let the you're just kind of like doing a little bump. It's like a bump in the road. Bump, and then the food comes back because you move the pan forward. <clears throat> so that's just another little tip that I'm. That I'm doing as I'm cooking here. You know, minimizing cleanup. If you had a spatula, I mean, when you're when you're camping, you generally have a small uh, pan. Um, I'll just grab a pan that I have. This pan right here. This is like a a little egg pan. It looks nasty. I don't know why. But this is a real good camping frying pan. I think it's called like Egg Perfect or something like that. 
it's just a little tiny frying pan and it actually holds probably I'd say one potato one good sized potato in here get all the little pieces this you'd shake it more than do the toss method but you know it's just it's it's easier just to toss also with this method it keeps the food from sticking even with non-stick pans you can get clumps of you know if the potatoes stay in one spot for a long time they tend to burn up and they stick to the bottom of the pan so when you toss them around all the time any ones that start to stick will get shaken loose by all the other potatoes so that's why this when you get it this can actually sweep all the loose potato sweep it free and then it becomes just one mass of like stuff so I think that's gonna do it guys I'm gonna finish cooking these oh yeah one more thing the heat on potatoes the heat that you cook it at is real low alright if you have it up too high it depends on your your preference but basically I guess it's still usable cook it on as low a heat as you can basically I have it on that's the simmering burner and that's the main burner you can see it's just barely lit alright it's just that's just provide an extra heat if you have any more heat than that you run the risk of burning your stuff and I find that you basically just let them cook alright the the heat basically breaks down the potato and then makes it soft okay so you do low heat for a long time and that's a real good method for a lot of foods when you're cooking steaks and stuff you do a low generally low type heat for a long time and that's going to break down all the stuff inside the food if you like a I prefer I personally like somewhat you know raw potato you don't have to cook it all the way through I like it somewhat crunchy I guess I can eat I do eat potatoes raw sometimes sometimes if I'm feeling crazy <laughs> but generally if you cook them down first then you can turn up the heat and crisp them up if you want Alright, so I'm going to let these cook, and uh, that's going to do it for this video. Peace.